Too good. Gotta go fast. I'm getting good at this. This is decent. <laughs> As you watch Fane compete for the Gotta Fast Championships. <laughs> Good Gotta job. go fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Uh, As you can see, fast. I have an awesome fire aspect 10 sword that's named Gotta Go Fast. It has 1.5 speed. It's unbreakable. It's kind of, you know, the best item ever. And you can go fast. He's going for Gotta it. Go fast. You got it. <laughs> did it. Did it. 10 out of 10. Good job. That's the best thing we've ever done. We got to go on. fast. Hey everyone, this is DJ Music, and I am joined with Fane, and we are going to be doing a MC Edit review filter thingy majigger, as well as gotta a kind fast. of an update video with our Gotta Go Fast weapons. Uh, this is actually created with my new filter that I'm about to release. Uh, it's actually designed for 1.8, so it helps a lot with the new other filters that I do, and yeah, it's just kind of all around awesome. So yeah, you can make Gotta Go Fast weapons, which go really fast as you can see gotta go fast they're, they're kind of awesome so yeah we'll get to that later but as you can see we are also in 14 week 28 a um that is the new snapshot that was released today they've added a couple new things um one of the biggest for map makers is if you do slash effect if you do at a and then you actually type uh quick tab there's actually lists of um enchants not enchants effects you actually have to have the names which is good but kind of not good so you can still use the values for now. Still yeah. do work, as you can see. Um, the and that still is exactly the same. But you can also type slash night vision or not slash night vision. If you type night underscore vision, vision, it'll do the exact same thing. Um, so if you want to use the names, which is kind of nice because you don't have to worry about one for speed, two for jump boost. Uh, but yeah, that's that. I will be releasing my. I'll be updating my blocks. Uh, block IDs to, uh, command filter. Uh, for the effects command, so you actually will be able to use that with that. But for now, uh, just be aware that that is a change that's coming. And yeah, that's pretty much it. They also fixed a lot of the bugs. Um, there's no more square on my cursor because that was a big bug. That's gone. I believe compared, our repeaters are still broken. Yep, they're still broken. <laughs> so they actually place backward. I'm not sure if they actually are broken. Or if, let's see if these are actually one tick. These are actually still four ticks. So, yep, they're still broken even though... Yeah. Um, Surge actually said, comment on the post saying that it was actually fixed and you should actually try it before and then it was still broken. So good job, Surge. But yeah. you get the idea. This has been a problem for a while. But let's get on to the actual MC Edit review and get into cool stuff. Telraw to sign filter is next. Um, this is actually the new filter that converts a Telraw, any Telraw, to a sign. So as you can see up here, we have Telraw at a hello world. And on the bottom, we have the converted one. So it actually will completely customize the Telraw for a sign. You can customize this. So here's a give command for a book. Let me just get the book in my inventory. If you hold the book, as you can see, it says hello exactly like it does on the sign. So it does come, uh, customize that correctly. Summon it, same thing. Replace item does work as well for my fifth slot. And then, of course, um, I actually have one for my murder in the dark map. This is the store. So as you can see, it's in chat. If I actually look in my ninth slot, you can see the store is right there. Open this up, and there's actually the store right here. And all these are clickable if it was actually the right world, but of course this is my test world, so they don't work. But you get the idea, um, this is actually all working, so you don't have to worry about like customizing it for, say, or Telra. Um, it actually just will be able to run. So just run this filter on your uh, Telra block, and it will convert it to a block data. And yeah, it's pretty, self pretty self-explanatory. For the first filter, I actually do want to showcase how to do it. Um, so basically what you want to do is select make a 1x1 one one selection or whatever you, what you want to select. I'm just using 1x1 one one because I only want to convert one command block. Once you have it selected, click filter and uh, select convert tell raw for signs and books. Uh, this is the filter that it look comes up. It's not too many options but they're all pretty useful. So the first one is the actual type of output. There's a sign or a book. Um, so if you want to actually set a block or a sign, then you actually want to use sign, otherwise you want to use book. Uh, so basically, if you want to use sign, just select sign, and then you want to select the sign number. So this is actually the sign, uh, sign, line, sign line. <laughs> so basically, you select, if you want, uh, on the top of the one, you can just do one, two, three, or four. This will basically show where it will show up on the sign. For books, basically what you do is you just select the book option, and then you just change the title. So let's just say, uh, hello. The title will be, the author will be me. And then let's say my command talk, uh, command type. Let's make it replace item, 
we wanted to put it in the ninth slot. So that's basically slot eight. Um, and then player selector, we wanted to do that to all players. Once you click filter, you'll actually see that it ran. And now it actually has a replace item command in it. So this will actually place the book um, that we just set up into our eighth slot. So that's pretty cool. So welcome to the gotta go go fast sword. Uh, basically, gotta this go is fast a, tutorial. Yeah, this is a tutorial on how to make the sword. Uh, you can do this with my command block filter. It actually will create a custom item, and actually all it does is that you can just basically specify everything you want. I will be showing you how to do this um, in a little bit, but basically what it does is you, it actually will create all the tags for you. All you have to do is import them into the actual tags. So you guys, you can see they're all there, uh, but I, don't, I didn't actually create that command block. That's what the filter does for me because I'm lazy, even though I took like six hours to program the command block with him, but you know, lazy, laziness. So you guys can use this. It supports pretty much every single tag. Um, I will be adding some more for books and stuff like that, but for now, this is pretty much all the tags for that, and I will show you how to do it right now. So basically, this is the region. It's a one-by-one one block. You want to click filter and select the create custom item. So this actually has two tabs. Uh, it, it just kind of works better. The first one are the command options, so how it actually will work. So let's, we can actually uh, change it as well. So we can do give, summon, or replace item. I'm just going to use replace item command because I like that one the most. Replace item slot, let's say 8 again, and then we want all players. Now we go to configure item, and we can see all the wonderful options. So as you can see, this is the awesome sword. Um, this is actually supposed to be, I realized I did this wrong. So basically the first option, format code, this is how if you want to do colors. Uh, this is applicable to the name tag as well as the lore tag. So if you want to do colors, you can actually use this symbol. Whatever you type here will be, will be changed out for the sectional symbol. So if you want to add colors, you can do it that way. So format code, you have the end symbol. Item type, uh, basically you just type the name of the item. So let's go with iron sword. You can do diamond sword, you can do block of wood. Let's actually do that, let's do wool. So let's just have a wool. And let's make it a black piece of wool. So we'll make damage 15. Uh, we want the item count to be, let's make it just one. We only need one block. And then we'll just say, so it will have the end sign, four. And then we'll have wool of, and then we'll do, let's do C. So let's do another end sign using that. And then we'll type destruction, uh, four, sorry. And then we'll type destruction. So it's the wool of destruction. Ooh. For lore, we can basically specify what we would like. Um, I'm just going to say scary and fiery. <laughs> so it's going to it's gonna be very scary and fiery. Um, if, you, if, if the tag has atom color, so basically if you want it to be like a um, chest plate, you can do it there. Um, I just don't need to do that, so don't worry about that. Um, unbreakable, you can make it so it doesn't break. Um, I'll keep that on. Basically, negative one also is so that it actually will not work. So if you don't want it to actually include the color tag, just it's negative one. Um, and then hide flag, so if you want to fly the, or if you want to hide stuff, you can just select it. Please select is the default, so if you don't want it to hide flags, just like please select. Um, it's supposed to be at the top, I don't know why it isn't, I think it's in alphabetical order, even though it's not. I don't know, I put it in the right order, it just doesn't choose it correctly, so let's just do that for now. Enchantment ID, let's make it fire aspect, uh, let's make it level 100, actually no, just for fun, let's make it 9001, for fun. Uh, so if you actually want to do can destroy, this is only for tools, but basically if you want to make it so you can only destroy specific blocks, all you do is you list them. So you do like sand, comma, and then you do another comma, and actually you don't even need that. You can just use without quotes. So sand, comma, wool, comma, uh, let's see, what, what could you break with a wool block? You could probably make a tree, right? Let's go with planks <laughs> and log for fun. So that's basically what you could break, uh, can place on. And then if you let's if we do sandstone, oops, if I can spell correctly, sandstone, you actually be able to place this block on sandstone. So that's pretty cool. Attribute name, this is the fun part. So you can actually do speed boost, attack damage, uh, maximum health and re knockback resistance. I'll do max health. Oops, that was interesting. Uh, I do, I'll do max health and I'll make it. Let's make it five times health. Actually, we'll make it ten for the fun of it. So that should give us a lot of health. And then if you want um, operations, basically how to adjust it. It could be 0, 1, or 2. I'll keep it at 0 just because you don't need it. And yeah, this is basically all set up. So let's click filter. And we will get our command block. If you highlight over it, you can see all the tags. So it created all that for us, and it makes it everything a lot easier. The the final the final filter that, that we're doing is it's, it's going to be... I don't know where you went. Okay. The final filter that we're doing is actually my uh, inventory controller filter. 
and it will actually completely set the inventory for a specific player. I'm going to show you how to set it up because it's not too self-explanatory, um, and then we'll actually go into running it. So, you, there's going to be three chests. Yep, there's going to be three chests, and then there's going to be three blocks um, either below or above it. If you put it above it, it does also work. Um, just you have to have indicators, so I'm using these indicators. That these are the defaults. You can change them into the config. So the first one is the armor. Um, you put the put the items in the first four slots. This does work for this does work for uh, wonderful enchants as well as custom names. So if you have any uh, custom names or any attributes, it will actually notice them. So just put your armor in the uh, down block one. Next one is the inventory. This is the entire thing. As you can see, I've custom named items. I put the wonderful. Huh? Say, say your line. Gotta go fast. Yeah, there you go. The gotta go fast sword. Mm -hmm. uh, I put that in the actual chest, so we'll actually be able to run that. And then as you see, if I got my hot bar, um, there's one through nine, and then that's actually how you can set that. So this will actually create a wonderful stack of com um, command blocks. I don't know if it's actually safe because it might be too high. So I'm actually going to remove all of these items just so you can see the idea. So let's say you want three blocks there, and let's put a wonderful sign in slot one, and then we'll put a potion for my other command block in slot two. So this is actually messed up colors because we didn't really check it, but yeah. So there you go. Uh, so basically you have the armor, the inventory, and the hot bar. As long as you have a block uh, below it or above it to specify which one it is, you're good. And then you have to have a, a location setter. So this is where the command block will appear. It'll appear right on top like this. So once you're actually done with that, I'll uh, just go into MC Edit and we will run the filter. Okay, so basically we have these four, uh, six blocks right here, then the end stone. Wherever you place an end stone, a command block will spawn on top. So if you actually place like end stone up everywhere, um, the command block will actually spawn everywhere, which is pretty cool. So you can actually duplicate the command really easily with this if you would like. So basically you just make the selection. You have to include at least all the chests and you want to include um, the indicators as well as the end stone block. If you don't, it'll give you an error. Then click filter. And then this time you want to select the player inventory setter. And here it is. It's actually pretty self-explanatory. It just looks really large because these take up a lot of room. So basically indicator location. Um, this is going to be if it's below. So look for, if the blocks are, if the indicators, the um, iron, gold, and diamond are below, make sure you select indicator below. If you put them on top of the chest, it's indicator above. Once you do that, make sure that these are all correct. So the hot bar is correct. It's a lock of iron. Inventory is set to gold and diamond is set to um, diamond. So then there's an end stone right there. Basically, just make sure that you have this. Um, and then you want to have the player selector. So this is basically who the, who's going to replace the inventory. If you actually want to add it for a specific player, make sure you add the uh, score underscore chord. So if you want to say, actually, you could just do this. So like, let's say you want to give all the attack attackers all this gear. You can just do team is equal to attackers. Uh, make sure you add the end bracket. And then everyone on the attacker will, so will get the team, but nobody else will get it. So you can actually specify that if you would like in here. Um, make sure you do it now because once you run the command, it'll be really hard to do it later. Um, actually, the way that this actually works is it doesn't delete these. So if you actually can keep these right next to the spawn, and then you can rerun the command if you want to update anything. But just make sure that you do not, you can't really edit the command once you actually do it because it's going to be large. Um, usually they run around 1500 characters. So just make sure that you are aware. Uh, well, make sure you think ahead when you're doing this. So you have to do it later. And then build activator rail apparatus. We'll just basically just build the apparatus on top of this block so that you can run it without having to do much else. So let's build it so you guys can see it. And let's click filter. There we go. So as you can see, um, the only thing that really changed is now there's a command block on here. If you look at the command, it's huge. Um, and then on top of that, there's a little piece of um, stone. This is just... Um, granite so it's polished granite and then we have the activator rail on top so let's go back into the game and check it out so we are back in the game and as you can see nothing has changed all these chests are exactly the same which is why i like it so much um all of these can actually be just updated so like let's say you actually want to move this to the ninth slot all you do is that uh run this entire filter again if you um if it doesn't work for some reason just destroy this command block uh, it, it should work it but sometimes because command blocks are tile entities they do get messed up when updating so basically just run this command again while removing this block. Um, but then other than that, it should be able to run again. So just make sure you, that's why this actually stays here. It's because it acts as an indicator to where it's supposed to be. So now that we actually have this block, let's actually spawn the wonderful stack of command blocks. Let's go game mode one again. So let's basically put a block here and you can see 
this is actually the one command block that controls this entire thing. Uh, if I actually push it around, you can see it actually is not just one. Uh, the way it works is it actually spawns a, a cart riding another cart riding another cart, which is really nice because it actually will all run on that one cart. So I'm just going to kill the minecart command blocks so they don't actually get too annoying. Let's spawn a new one and let's see how it works. So basically the easiest way to, get, uh, to make sure these guys don't move is to put them in barriers or have blocks. Uh, really, you only need oops, <laughs> really you only need them right there and there. They were, can't really move because they're on a track. So basically, once you do that, they should be safe. So now let's actually activate it. Let's actually clear my inventory so you guys can get the idea. Let's place this there. Oops. Place that there. Clear. There we go. So as soon as I click this block, you can see I actually have an inventory of all the stuff. So the sign is here. The flask with the custom name and the custom lore is there. Also has the speed as well as the regeneration that's hidden using hide tags. All these are here. Has the same name, has the same tags, and these are duplicated three times in the correct slots. Iron helmet, iron chest plate, iron leggings, and iron boots are all here. And all of this was from one little stack. If I push this around now, it actually will not work because it's on the tag. So as long as you actually have blocks blocking it, you are safe. And that is kind of the extent of it. It works with all kinds of um, all kinds of tags. I will be adding book support, so you actually can put books in the inventory if you would like to do that. For now, if you actually want to add books, all you have to do is update the command. Um, basically, just add another writing tag. So basically, the way it works is you have a, the command right there. And then you have at the very end, here's the name. If I go to the very end of the command, you actually see will see writing. So it's right here. You have another writing tag, and then it writes another minecart command block with the command of this. So this kind of happens a lot. Uh, but basically, if you want to add any more commands, you can just kind of change them. Uh, these are all completely editable. They just get really, really long. So as you can see, it goes on quite a while. But yeah, you can do all this without um, easily with the like easily done. If you actually use the set block filter, like the, if you actually summon this item, and then now that I have this item, I can actually put this in the chest and add it to alert, a loadout. That's kind of what I designed it for. As you can see, I can actually clone this. Um, and, and, and counts are even duplicated. So if you want 64 items, you can do that. Everything is exactly cloned from the loadout chests. So it makes everything really easy. And now since I updated the loadout, all you have to do is run it from here to here again. And it would actually update this command block with the new one. So you actually could spawn a new minecart. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. I'm going to be using this a lot. I'm excited. This was actually Fane's idea for the actual command. I coded it last night. Um, but I decided to actually share it with you guys because this is definitely going to help a lot of map makers with uh, creating custom maps and loadouts. Loadouts can be quite annoying just because of the fact that they're so like complex. Um, if you want to do this with just like a line of commands, I'd have to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 replace item commands. I'd have to do them all manually. If I have custom tags, I'd have to actually can code all of the tags um, and add that to the tag for the command block. So it gets pretty time intensive. So the fact that you can literally just use my other, one of the filters to create the items, the other to actually put it to the loadout makes it quite awesome. So yeah, that's pretty much the filter. Uh, if you guys liked it, please share it with your friends. I'm excited for 1.8. And we, uh, yeah, please uh, stay tuned for my other filters that are coming out. Like I said, the block um, ID tag updater to, uh, from the, for block ID to block name, that filter will be updated for, um, for effect commands. That's the word. Basically, so then if, uh, the effects in any of the command blocks will basically be replaced. So you don't have to worry about um, it actually kind of glitching out or anything like that. So you don't have to, uh, it'll just kind of replace it like silently. Kind of the same thing I did for IDs uh, to update your maps to 1.8 because they broke in 1.7 for names. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I will see you guys all later. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.